Good day students, this is the second video based on the document called Notes on Search and Sort in your um, Classwork Week 11 folder. The first document we uh, discussed the selection sorting technique using the example in this document which you find on page 2. Step by step we went through this example um, discussing how the List of elements that start off as an unsorted list ends up as a list being sorted. The selection sort technique is based on um, a left end of the, of the list of elements, which is regarded as the sorted part of the list, and then the unsorted part of the list, which is referred to as the right end of the list of elements. When you start with the um, selection sort, the entire list is unsorted and then step by step the elements are placed at the left hand side of the array one by one which is then the sorted part of the list. As you see here in, on the screen in front of you element 10 and 14 are sorted now and as you progress through the steps through the loops of this sorting technique uh, the the left end of the elements grows and the right end, the unsorted part, shrinks as you move along until at the end the entire list is sorted. So that's the logic. We discussed this thoroughly in video 1. So on video 2, we want to look at the code. How do we code all of this? It starts with uh, showing the SEDU code. SEDU code from your first year, if you can recall, is a plan. It looks like programming code, but it's not really one of your programming languages that's reflected here. It's only a plan, which um, is almost like coding, but it, it's not language specific. So here you can see the two loops that we refer to. The outer loop is uh, in video one. The outer loop is always pointing towards the first element of the unsorted part of the list, which is the right end. So it slowly moves on and uh, progresses towards the end of the list of elements that, that needs to be sorted. The, part, the job of the inner loop is to identify the lowest value, in this case because it's integer values, the lowest value of the unsorted part of the list. It's using the minimum variable uh, while it's uh, progressing. And as soon as it finds a lowest element than the previous one, it will assign the value of j, which is the index value of the element, to the minimum uh, variable. So once this loop is done, minimal Minimum uh, variable will point towards the smallest value or the lowest value in the unsorted part of the list. So below this loop, once that element has been identified, that element is then swapped with the initial first uh, element of the unsorted part of the list. So that's the logic behind selection sort. That's the plan close to a programming code. So on the next page, page 5, you'll find a C++ solution of uh, the SEDU code. Remember, part of the outcomes of this module is to be able to convert a C++ program into a Java program. That's what we did the first week of this module. So this is a bit of revision to remind you how to uh, translate from one language into Java, from in this case from C++ into Java. Uh, this code is a simple um, uh, solution. There's no classes or objects involved. You only create one class which will contain the main method, public static void main in the Java version, and it will contain the selection sort method, static method, and it will contain the display method in your translation into Java. So it's the same in this C++. You have your main function. That's what we call it in C++, if you can remember. We've got our selection sort function, and we've got the display function. 
So this discussion will then be based on this solution, which you will then convert into a Java solution. So if we look at the selection sort part, we have three variables which will control your loops and will control you will um, have will keep the minimum value, which we'll explain in in a minute. For the purpose of this explanation, I've just drawn three uh, variables here, positions which reflects the positions of these variables in RAM or in memory. It's I, J, and minimum. Let me just take out the zero. At the moment, it's been declared in um, memory. Then also, we will use a temp variable, and you. Uh, this is the array that is declared at the start of this solution, at the top there. You can see it on your screen. It's an integer type array, so it will contain integers right through, and it's a fixed number of elements, which is max seven elements. So on the selection sort, it has an outer loop, which you will see indicated in blue. That's the outer loop, and at the bottom, this is the end of the outer loop. All the code here is contained inside, it's part of the outer loop. Inside this outer loop, you have the minimum um, is equal to i. This is the starting point of the unsorted part of the list. At the moment, if you look at the array at the bottom of this screen, 50 is the first element, which is the first element of the unsorted part of the list, which is at the moment the entire array. All the elements are unsorted. So minimum is equal to 0, which is the first element, and then <clears throat> I, the outer loop, is starts at position 0, the first element of the unsorted part of the list. The inner loop, indicated in yellow, will step through all the elements, all the remaining elements, and it will check for the lowest value in the unsorted list of the array, which is all the elements. So J will start at I plus 1, so it will be 1, 1 more than the outer loop, and it will go up to max, less than max. This makes sense because remember we start at position 0, so it must go up to less than 7, in other words go up to 6. The inner loop always goes up to the very last element. Alright, so inside the inner loop there's an if that will compare the j element, which is 1 at the moment, 60, with the minimum element, which is 0. 50. Is 60 less than 50 in the array, array at the bottom here? No, it's not less than 50, so the statement inside the if will not be executed, and uh, the loop will jump back. J will become one more, J++, so J will become two, and um, it will test again. Is the J element in the array 30 at the bottom here? Uh, example of the array is 30, the J position, less than the minimum position, 50. Yes, it is. So now, minimum must point towards the lowest element at the moment, which is J. So J will become, minimum will become 2, which is the same as J. J will jump back to the start of the loop, J++. It will become 3. It will say, if is element j, which is 3, less than element minimum, number uh, 2, is 20 less than 30? Yes, it is. So minimum must get the same value as j. j will jump back and it will become 4. Is element 4, the j element, less than element minimum? So is element 4 less than element 3? Is 10 less than 20? Yes, it is. So minimum must become the same value as j, which is 4. The loop will jump back. j++, j will become 5. Is element j, which is 5, 90, less than element 4? Minimum. Is 90 less than 10? No. So 
minimum will remain the value of 4. It will not become j because j is not pointing towards the smallest element at the moment. The inner loop will jump back. j will become 6. And it will test again, is element j 6 less than element minimum? Is, is 70 less than uh, 10? No, it's not. So minimum will stay the value of 4. Uh, j will jump back, j++, plus plus, j will become 7. Is j still less than 7? No, it's not. It's now equal to 7, so the inner loop is done. It will jump out of the loop and see, must it swap or not? The test for swapping is if minimum has a different value than i, then it means that a smaller value was identified than the first unsorted element. There was a smaller value in the unsorted list here, which was element 4. It was identified as a smaller value than the initial starting point. So therefore, the smaller value must be swapped with 50. 50 must be in position 4 now, and 10 must be in position 0, because 10 is now the smallest element of the sorted list. Okay, so the, how does the swap work? There's a temporary variable, which must be the same data type as that of the array int. So the first statement is, put element which is in the minimum position, position 4, 10. Put the 10 into this temporary um, variable. The next statement, you have to put whatever you had in position i, whatever you have in position i, which is 50. You must put that, assign that to the minimum position, posi position 4. So in position 4, you will have 50 now. That's the second statement of swap. So as you can see, you have two 50s now. That is why you had to put the 10 aside, because the last statement is, take whatever you have in 10, which is 10 now, and put it into position 0, because i is position 0. So now you have swapped the 10, the smallest element, with the 50, the first element of the array. So at the moment, you have one sorted element, which is at the left end of your array, the left part, the sorted element. The outer loop will go back, the i will become i++, plus plus, and i is now the value of 1. i is then pointing towards the first unsorted element, of, the first element of the unsorted part of the array. So that is where we must now start looking for the next smallest element in the remaining unsorted part of the array, which is the job of the inner loop. So minimum is the variable that will help us to do that. So minimum will start with the value of i, which is 1 at the moment. The inner loop will start at i plus 1, which is 2. And the whole process will start all over again, testing one by one, is element j less than minimum? So at the moment, is element 2 less than 60? Because minimum is element 1. Is 30 less than 60? Yes. So minimum must point towards 30 now, which is the same as j. It must become the same value as j. It will continue like this. J will become one more, which is three, and then again it will test. Is J pointing towards a small, this, a smaller element than minimum at the moment? Yes, it is, because 20, element three, is smaller than 30, element two. So now minimum must now point towards the position of J, because it's the lowest one of the two. J will become one more, which is four. And it will say, is element j, which is 4, less than 3? No, 50 is not less than 20. j will jump back. It will become 5. Is element 5, 90, less than element 3, 20? No. So j will become 6. Is 70 less than element 3, 20? No. 
So minimum will remain 3. J will jump back. It will become 7. The loop will stop. The inner loop will stop. Below the loop, it will check whether I and minimum are different values. Yes, a smaller value than 60 was found in this unsorted list. The value that sits in position 3 is smaller than the value that sits in position 1 of this list. So swap 50, uh, sorry, 20 will go into 10. The 50, uh, sorry, the 20, uh, oh, the 60 will go into the 3 position. That's your second statement. 60, the initial value, 60, will go into the minimum value, which is position, which is 3. Last statement, whatever you have in temp will go now into element I, which means now you've got two sorted elements. So the left part of the array is growing. It's two uh, elements um, that are sorted now. On the right-hand side of the array, you still have five elements that's unsorted. So the outer loop will go back. It will uh, be incremented to the value of 2, pointing towards the first unsorted element of the remaining list in the array. The entire process will re be repeated. The inner loop will look for a lower value than number 2, which it will not find. There's nothing lower. So it will step through all the elements still because it, it has to step through all the elements to just make sure. When it reaches the end, it will check. Is minimum the, still the same as uh, I? In this case, it will be because there is no, nothing less than 30. 30 is still the lowest value. So it will remain 2. It will skip the swap and I will go back and it will um, be uh, 3 now. J will start at position 4. Minimum will be the same as I. The inner loop will check. We are now at position 3, which is 60. The first element of the unsorted part of the list, the inner loop will uh, go step through all the elements, it will identify 50 as, as the smallest element, and 50 and 60 will be swapped uh, as the last part of this loop. Again, I will go back and I will become 4, and so on. So I hope you get the idea of the logic behind this code. As you can see, the code rib is fixed. In other words, it's, it's, a, it's always the same. You code it in this way. Whether you are working in Java, C++, or whatever, do not change any of the code. This is selection sort. It's a, a fixed set of instructions. The only thing that will change based on your scenario will be in the name of the array and the data type, the content of temp. Maybe the data type will be doubles, then temp must be double. If the data type, if you uh, uh, save characters in the array, the a temp will be type character. That, so that will be the only uh, two things that will change. It will be um, the name of the array, the data type, and perhaps also max, because the array can contain another number of elements, more than that or less than what we have discussed here. So, please convert this into Java as part of revision to see whether you can still convert a C++ program into Java. With the next video 3, we will discuss uh, how to sort objects.